You too busy playing dress up. <coughs> Using my skin like a costume. A costume, Fury. Do you not recognize this skin? Huh? This face. This was the first human I killed. And you know why I killed him? I killed him because you told me to. Oh, wow. You don't even remember. The first mission you sent me on. You know, I was young. I tried my best. I wanted to give everything to impress my hero. You know, the one who promised us a home. But this man... This man, Fury, he had a wife. And he had children. Yeah, all right, maybe he was a bit misguided. But I killed him because of you. Hey, Powers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. No, I'm Robert. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about two episodes, which would be episode five, Harvest, and episode six of uh, called Hope in the Secret Invasion Hope series. Or hope? I thought it was Home. Home? Home. Home. Yes, you are correct. Home. Okay. Sorry. I wrote Hope. Okay. Why did I yeah. write Hope? <laughs> because they need some hope. <laughs> oh, wow. I guess we'll talk about that later. But... <laughs> But, you know, it's a spoilerful overview of this particular uh, ending of the series and where it may be going. So uh, we're going to do this. We're going to tackle it episode by episode, Harvest being the first one. And uh, we'll uh, segue into that. Uh, both were very short episodes, if you think about it. They were less than 30 minutes to- overall with uh, even with like taking credits out. Yeah, less than forty, less than forty minutes, thirty-five minutes, something like that. So at, at most, very yeah. Short. So it, it's weird. You would think with something of this magnitude that they they did these would be longer, but obviously they're not. Yeah. But uh, we'll move right into episode five, which is harvest. So Steve, what is the synopsis? Uh, short and sweet. Uh, Fury gathers his allies. Gravik deals with unrest. Yeah. And uh, we we see a lot of unrest from <laughs> Mr. Gravik. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the way he treats his people. I mean, eh, this is where we go into our uh, points and interests of, of the episode. But Gravik is a, uh, a character that we should touch on and his needs and what he's doing. So what were your thoughts on Gravik as a whole? within this particular episode where where his focus was lying um i'm gonna all right i'll start on this one but i'm mm-hmm. gonna say that gravik's character in the beginning he seemed to be very he seems to be a very interesting character i definitely will say that uh, he you know his motives all those things but mm-hmm. he seems to be a character that's that just wasn't done the right way mm-hmm. uh, you know and his motives just seem to me at least weak because he seems to be the only one holding that grudge of whatever Nick Fury put him through. Correct. Uh, compared to everybody else. The uh, the actor, which I forget the names, uh, the the name of the actor itself, but who was actually uh, pretty good. He came out. He actually recently came out in the Barbie, um, <laughs> the Barbie movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. So um, he he's actually, I think, very good, a very good actor. And I was happy to see him on that. But. I don't know. I think his character was one of the most interesting ones there. Everything else, I think, fell flat. At least Disney decided to get themselves some really good actors Mm -hmm. with this entire series. They just didn't leverage them the right way, I think. It's the writing, I think, because honestly, my my focus on graphic and the way it was, you know, brought in. From the fir- very first episode and what we knew of him and all the way up until maybe about the third episode. Right. It was very much focused. It was a focused character on a mission. And then as we see between four until I say the last episode, everything was focused more on emotion and passion about he was treated and he kind of leveraged that onto his people, which were the scrolls. And trying to utilize that as his way. 
you know, a lot of it is writing. I'm, uh, you know, Rob, you had stated in the very beginning that <laughs> the whole intro is done by AI. Mm -hmm. I, I would not be surprised if somebody at the very end said, hey, let's use AI to write this last episode. <laughs> <laughs> These last couple of. Yeah, I, you know, Gravik, it was interesting because he would. I didn't I didn't get. When he changes the plan. Right. And, mm -hmm. and decides to go against his own people. And that's a little that's where I was like confused because I was like, wait a minute. His new plan is that he is going to have the scrolls themselves get involved in this in this fight. And like it, it didn't it it just it felt flat for me because I was kind of like going, wait a minute. The whole point of this was you wanted Russia and the United States to fight against each other. So they mm -hmm. cause nuclear war and your people can survive. But none of the humans will get it <laughs> but now when when he finds out that this when you know it's it's revealed that there was an alien at the site of the of the president's attempted assassination and suddenly that the, the world knows that they're there then he he changes it and he goes well now i'm just going to kill all the people that actually support me and hope that the rest of the million scrolls that are on earth will follow me after that i i didn't get like he's it was i understand too passionate at that point if you think about it because He's sacrificing his own people, but yeah, he's, also he's, just to make all, like a species instinct uh, extinct yeah. at that point. Yeah, yeah. Right. He's, he's sacrificing. He's sacrificing the people who support him. Mm -hmm. And so, what are the people that, that the people that don't even know what's going on? Right? There's there's a let's say okay. I don't know how many scrolls were in that compound. Like there could have been more than maybe a few hundred. Right? Let's say let's say there was even five hundred. If he had five hundred people in his compound, yeah. Right? That's still. 999,500 other scrolls <laughs> out there that don't even know what the heck is graphic. Like, they uh, don't even know. Yeah, depending they, they, even if they got the information. <laughs> I didn't get that, that, that note. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't send out, yeah, he didn't send out a memo to the entire scroll population with this. So, all they're going to know is, hey, you started this war and you killed your own people. How do you think we're going to feel now? Like, it didn't, it, it just, and then when we get to episode six, we'll get to what happens happens there. But it yeah. just he it's like it's like he lost his mind there. Like I, I think you're right, Mark. I think the writing it was just poorly written, and it the, didn't. The character was clouded by his intentions without including others, even though his overall scheme totally was to be inclusion of his own people, the species, and right. and at this point. Uh, as we see uh, a little, little spoilers at the very end for the last episode, he's a speciesist. He just mm -hmm. became, you know, I, I, it's not racist. He's a speciesist. He just hates humans at that point. And most concernably is Fury himself, which we do find out in the last episode exactly his intentions of why he did what he did. Which was okay writing. It was done very well. But in this case, the statement that the writers were trying to give to us as the audience and when he's talking to his people was kind of overshadowed. Because they, they just wanted to look at him as a, a crazy dictator in this particular episode. Yeah. And hard. Yeah, when he kills, he kills that guy, Beto, he just sla slashes his throat right there in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I said... How does he think anybody's going to follow him after that? It just, it, it, I didn't get grabbed. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You're right, Steve. It just doesn't make any sense on the, yeah. the character itself. Like their motives really don't make sense either. I mean, it's just a small group. Basically think of it as a small terrorist group. That's just trying to pretty much um, create this havoc in the world. And of course, Nick Fury, and we'll talk about Nick Fury, you know? So here's what I, uh, I would say is that I remember when we started this podcast on secret invasion that I said, well, you know, so far I'm going to give it a chance. And then all of a sudden it came up to, you know, what is it? Episode three or four, where all of a sudden the, the president or four where the president actually gets, they try to kidnap him or something like that. And I was like, okay, finally this show is starting to, you know, ramp up. And then it just took a downhill turn again. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it lost that momentum and I just, and like I said, I, I felt like, uh, and by the way, the actor's name is uh, Kingsley Benadir. Mm -hmm. So, his, like I said, his character, Gravik, it just seems like, hey, he's just a terrorist. He just wants to basically just watch the world burn, as they say. 
And but it's not like, hey, all the scrolls are actually looking to, you know, exact revenge on Fury the same way, or they're pissed off that they're on Earth or something like that. You know what? It just seems like it's just a few of the scrolls that are kind of, you know, disenchanted with the whole thing. But the mm-hmm. rest, we don't know about the rest. We don't know what's going on with the rest of these scrolls. We don't know what's going on with, you know, we know what's going on with Fury's wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, you know, she's okay with being on Earth. And there's probably other scrolls that are okay on being on Fall. We know the majority of them are okay with being on Earth. And the majority of them are blending in. Not that they... You know, he has this small minority that wants to wear their own skin and live in their own place. But then, like I said, there's, you know, a million of them. So there's a whole bunch out there that are just living their lives, you know, right. just doing doing their thing as a human. I, and I don't know if they all, you know, like uh, like Rava, uh, not Rava, Vera, Vara and Priscilla tells the story of how she got the the body that she has. You know, and it right. sounded pretty, pretty legit. Um, so I don't know if the rest of them are like, you know, what was the suggestion was that he, I think he said something like, well, I didn't know if you just picked it out of a crowd in Canada and chose that form. Right. And then came to the United States. So right. I wonder how many of them have doppelgangers out there that they never even met, that they just see somebody and then they, they go to a different place to well, live. It out seems like there's a lot of them that just got replaced and they got taken out of the basically uh, out of civilization because towards the end of episode six you could see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they uh, kind of take whoever they take possession of, they literally house them somewhere else and right. You know, they well, just no, take I, th- up yeah, their that's, appearance. Yeah, but I'm talking about I'm talking about the million other schools, the nine hundred thousand Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, we, yeah. That the, and and that's the problem. We don't know if they took them out or if they just right. replaced them. Right, you know, we don't know. So, and and the show never gives us anything of that. Of no just answers. The, yeah, the average scroll out there living their lives, you know, on Earth. That if Gravik hadn't done what he did, because it, it just, it just, I, I'm, I, I, I keep going round and round with the same thought. But it's just, he has <laughs> I, this, yeah, he has it, this it's small like a cyclical this, thing. Yeah, he has this small percentage of people that, like Rob, you, you said, are disenchanted with Fury not finding them a home. But yet there's 900,000 other scrolls out there that apparently are, as far as we know, because we the show didn't tell us. Right. Are just just happy living their lives and are blending in. So, I I mean, I wish they would have. What I wish I would have seen is, hey, all of a sudden there's all these small scroll cells throughout the entire world waiting Mm -hmm. for graphics to actually give the word or something like that. Right. Or show us more. Show us more of Brixton, of of the people living in Brixton mm. who are scrolls everywhere just, because it's supposed to be all over the world. So yeah, right, show yeah. me, show me that hey, this is not just in Brixton, but this is hey, everywhere in the world, every scroll is waiting for graphics to give the word so that they can now take over the world or whatever it is that they're gonna do. But this is more of a concentrated thing, and to me, mm-hmm. it just seems like hey, it's just a group of. You know, of you know, just again, a terrorist cell that's yeah. just deciding. Oh well, you know, we don't like the way things are being done, and that's the mm-hmm. part. That's the biggest problem I had with this, uh, yeah. with this whole show. It was just that it was just that little bit, but the implications of having a million people being replaced is huge, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And yeah. the fact that you know, okay, you know, we saw a few leaders and things like that, but. I wish they would have shown us everyday people all of a sudden are being replaced. Yeah, the side right. shot or even right. them seeing the exposure of Talos at that time when they killed him on screen f- protecting the president at that point and them going, wait, when did this happen? And they are in their own home watching TV and they just turn to a scroll with shock on their face going, right, I never got that. And they should. It's kind of like a they live kind of moment. They live amongst us. But the thing is, is that majority of them, I would believe in my mind, because like you said, Rob, that it's like a small sect terrorist group that Graphic was leading. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those people, like what Steve was saying, is that they're living their own lives and they don't have a clue as to what's going on in this world as other people. And then they see this on the news. And the thing is, media is everywhere and they should be able to see it and then have that expression of like, well, I didn't do this because at the very end, we find out this episode that (laughs) the the president wants to destroy everybody. 
Correct. At certain points. Exactly. So if you're going to do something like that, like, like let, one, let's see the reaction of the world going, holy shit, what do you mean there's a whole bunch of, you know, people out there? Mm-hmm. Let all of us, let all, all of us, all of a sudden see how humanity reacts very quickly to suspicion yeah. of everybody. It's like, well, are you a scroll? Are you a scroll? They did that towards the end of episode six where they were killing people that mm-hmm. were scrolls and non scroll. Right. But I think that should have been something that they should have done. I think early on to kind of that would have been a great part of the story of like early on people start to find out and what is the reaction uh, yeah. towards the entire world of something like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only that, like you were saying, Mark, hey, maybe half of them are going, whoa, we never agree to any of this. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, so also the fact that, hey, they are scrolls in, on Earth that do not want this. You mm-hmm. know, they just they know that there's no other life. Yes, Fury said they were going to get us, you know, a home. But so far, so good. You know, I'm a, I'm in a good place. I'm not mm-hmm. being hunted. I'm not in war. Nothing like that. I just have to disguise myself or whatever it is. Show something like that. But no, what they did was just one little island of in Russia. Yeah, in Russia of these group of people that are there. The Russian mm-hmm. compound. Yeah, you know, and that's literally that all we had seen. Right. And it, right. like, it, yeah, like you were saying, it's like one of those where it should have been, they could have added to that for a montage of just within a filming showing these people. It's like somebody that works at Walmart comes home, goes into their kitchen, turns on their TV, and then next thing you know, they see this. Right. What is going on? Hold on. I didn't sign up for this. And I didn't, like, <laughs> we were joking. I didn't get that memo. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And on top of that, once the humans in this world see that as well, you have people being very suspicious of anybody they talk to because they don't know if it's a human or a scroll. So they don't even know if their neighbor is. They accidentally shoot their neighbor and he was human. Correct. And then you have somebody else like down the road that is a scroll going, uh, I'm not going outside. Yeah, right. It's the stu- I think this is this was just lazy writing. It is. This was really lazy writing because when you start to do something like this, you have to actually think of the ramification of what's going to happen when the population of Earth finds out that there's a million scrolls throughout the world. You know, it's like saying the pandemic. When we were in the pandemic, what happened? Well, shit, everybody just went on lockdown. You see everybody with masks. Nobody wanted to touch anybody. Keep away from me. Uh, keep six feet away from me. I mean, I got, you know, there were people in scuba suits. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that shit really made me laugh when I saw a picture where somebody was in an entire scuba suit with an aqua lung and everything <laughs> in a Walmart. And I'm like, uh, OK, you know, like the ridiculousness of what's going on with this pandemic. Imagine if you were to tell people, hey, there are aliens from another world that look exactly like us. Mm-hmm. or have replaced us or whatever it is we're gonna hunt them down well in the meantime while you're hunting them down how am i supposed to live right you mm-hmm. know and and that's something that i think should have been covered they never covered it and it sucks but yeah, yeah they you know, left it is, out. yeah they left it out and it is what it is you know so i just I, I thought it was lazy lazy writing i think the only part that i really enjoyed honestly out of this entire show was Olivia Coleman's uh, character? Yeah, uh, first now, of I all, I want to talk about. I want to talk about Sonya Barnes. We'll, we'll, yeah, because to, yeah, first Sonya of all, good. we're talking about an Oscar winner, uh, an Oscar winning actor mm-hmm. that they grabbed for this show, but it's just her the way she pretty much carried on with that type of um, character was, I think, awesome. Yeah, she didn't have a care in the world, and the way she carried herself, I thought, was actually uh, very amusing. Yeah. And she was the only one that honestly was interesting to me. I I totally agree that that scene. I have it in my notes. That scene when she goes and gets the doctor, right? And and she's like looking at the lab, and she's like, "This is a great, this is a great lab. It's too bad I have to torch it, you know." And right. then and then the the husband the husband grabs her as a hostage, and Sonya Barnes was just like, "Oh, men are always threatening us with their with killing us or something else." And then she just shoots him in the head, like just out of the blue. I was just like, "Whoa." You know, and then the next episode, we'll talk some more about her because she does some more stuff in the next. Yeah, episode. Yeah, because that's an interesting character. The fact that she's like that, but it had like in a split second, she just shot the other guy and, and she had like this stone cold mm-hmm. look on her face. 
And that made me go, wow, this is somebody who has been in this uh, business for a long time. Because she knew the, <laughs> she knew the female knows? was the brains of the outfit. You know? no, not only that, but who knows what her past is. You know, like all these things just made me so curious about her character. Her, like if, yeah, they, they, yeah. If, they did a, yeah. if they did a good spy series with her, sure, I would definitely watch it. That was great. That scene when she's talking to when she's talking to uh, to the Fury. Scientist. No, when she's talking to Fury, and Fury tells her that Rhodey is a scroll, and that look on her face of total shock of she didn't know that Rhodey was a scroll, scroll, scroll. That Rhodey was a scroll was great. I loved it both times watching it because you that that the way she the way her face reacts to that news, you can tell she had no idea that that Colonel Rhodes was a scroll. Yeah, and, and and Fury's like, and you say I'm missing a step, you know, or something like that. It was well. Yeah. Let's touch upon that because fucking Fury knew <laughs> knew that fucking that you know that uh that Rhodes was a scroll, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he could have just shot him exactly where he was at. He would turn, and this could have all been avoided. But no, he didn't do anything. No. He's like, oh well, you the next to, episode. Uh, yeah, yeah, are you willing to die just like you know, just to uh, you have to kill me in order to uh, prove it? And are you willing? You're not willing to die right now. I love that shot at the beginning when beginning of episode five, where Fury they bring the, the president to the hospital, and Fury posts up, you know, outside the door. He's got that chair. He slams that chair down. He's got his gun in his hand, and like this is like the old Fury. Like this is this is Fury. Right, yeah, right. Not it's, the he's old standing man up for what he he needs to. Yeah, yeah. Not the old broken down man who's who's you know at the end of his his career. That's Fury posting up with a gun in hand, going, "I'm going to protect the president." But then Gravit calls him, and he has to leave to go get the DNA. You know, and I'm right. like, "Great, so you're going to leave the president just completely exposed, like like you said, Rob. You're leaving the president completely exposed, so that when the all that road scroll scroll roads has to do is come in and talk to the president." You know, you find out from Gravik in that phone call what the new plan is. The new plan is we're going to have everybody turn on the Russians and the scroll. We're going to act like the scrolls are working with the Russians. Right. And it's just, again, it's that I understand we had to get to that point where we have these super duper scroll. But, yeah. it's it, it, there, There's a way to end it to get a way around that, in my opinion. Yeah. But. The funny thing is, like, yeah, he gets up from his chair, goes out to the hospital, and he winds up making a phone call. If you think about it, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all you had to do. Yeah, and you know, it's to me, it was a nice standoff verbally, and it was good dialogue between Fury and Bravo, who is Rhodey, mm-hmm. and Rava, and- Rava. Rava? Rava, R A A, the in, in the closed captioning, the clap, the, yeah, the closed captioning had Rava, R A A V A. I had Rava. I, I don't know why. I, I'm just I, going by my ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I had the closed captioning on in the second time because I didn't notice it the first time, but the second time, Gravik says her name. Oh, okay. When, she, when he's talking to, when he's giving, it's Rodi's actually name. Vara, V A. No, Vara, Vara, Vara is, that's is Priscilla's wife. That's Fury's so wife. Who are, we talk, who are we talking about? Rhodey, the, the scroll pretending to be Rhodey. Oh, the, the, I'm the, sorry. The, the scroll name is Rava. Yeah. Rava. Okay. Yeah, which is a female. Yeah. Okay. We find out too. That's how that's how much I didn't care about what's go, what was going on with this uh, <laughs> show after one. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it was it was a good interaction, good dialogue. They actually the writers actually got it forth to put in a plan for the story. He leaves, but yet he comes back. And then he comes back in episode six, episode episode six, six, exactly. But uh, the manipulation by Rava to the president is what's interesting because it's her just constantly through being roadie trying to influence him, which is Mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it's all about the manipulation aspect of it. Yeah. 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 And then I mean, Fury's go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Fury's meeting with Gaia. I don't know if we're, are we ready? Are we, are we ready to move off from? that topic and go to Gaia. Cause I think Gaia is another one we want to kind of need to talk about Gaia, at least here in episode, episode in episode five. Yeah. She doesn't oh, have okay. a big, she doesn't have a big part in it, but she definitely, it, well, she's, I mean, she's got a pretty good size part in this episode here. Yeah, she does. Especially during when she visits the house and meets Vara mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the whole discussion about her father. And then, then it's the funeral pyre that they have to do. But She's so young, she doesn't remember anything of the the world of Skrull. 
Mm-hmm. So she doesn't know how to do the prayers or for the funeral pyre. So she kind of relies on Farah to do that for her. And I yeah. thought that was kind of uh, an ingenious little uh, segment in there for the fact that it's like, okay, a lot of these people don't know where they came from. And that mm-hmm. also leads to the millions that they have that are on earth that are claiming people's lives because the only world for some of them, a lot of them, because I'm sure there are a lot of young children only knew earth and mm-hmm. didn't know scrolls at all. Yeah. Correct. Which yeah. is actually very, uh, it's very uh, reminiscent to what's, you know, sometimes what happens here in the United States with the whole thing with the immigration, which is, Correct. Hey, mm-hmm. you have people who did cross the border, you know, 20, I don't know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever it is. And they had kids here and now mm-hmm. they want to actually show or not even that they actually, the kids, when they crossed the border were probably nine months old or something like that. Mm-hmm. But all they've ever known is the United States. How are you mm-hmm. going to take a child that all he's ever known is the United States and then throw him back to, you know, to Mexico mm-hmm. or to yeah. wherever it is. Yeah. And, I, mean, and, I, don't, nephews, and I don't want to, and I don't want to make, yeah. yeah, I don't want to make this like a political thing or anything like that, but this is basically the same thing. You're going to probably have yeah. a lot of young scrolls that did not know their own home world, but they grew up on earth. And so how are they going to deal with this? Mm-hmm. Or you know, or how are they reacting to all this stuff? Yeah, and, and I just, Gaia, I just go back. one of them. Yeah, we go back know. to the conversation we had at the beginning when we started recording. Is it just they didn't show us the the average scroll out there? Yeah, you know, who's right. not part of Gravix community? So yeah, and Amelia Clark. Let me tell you. So here's what I think about Amelia Clark. First of all, I think she's a an extremely talented actress, just very, very gifted. I think in that sense. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, I admire her very much and she's absolutely gorgeous. She was wasted in this show. Oh, yeah. Her talents and who she is was completely wasted in this show. I mean, that uh, conversation she has with Fury is is really good where she says, don't worry about me. I'll put on a good face, you know, but when Fury sends her to the house, that's a that's a good scene. Between her yeah. and Fury, when they're in the when she when she talks about when she was a child, she used to hide under I used to hide under that that table right there and listen to you all making your plans and and doing your things. Well, there and, was the story. Uh, it was really the story about what the mural was on the wall about people who were oppressed, and she didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. Now, as she's gotten older, she understands it from her viewpoint, based upon being a scroll. Because it was during war and a lot of these people were taken away from their country and they're stuck in a foreign land and they had to adapt, but they were still ostracized in some way. Yeah. Right. Yep. I mean, that uh, <laughs> uh, again, you know, is this and I'll go back to what I originally said, you know, uh, a few episodes ago. I was like the story of Secret Invasion is really a Secret Wars or something like that or Secret, secret Invasion. No, it's Secret Invasion. But is it a secret? Okay, so secret invasion. But the fact is that secret invasion was all about how the scrolls replace, especially a lot of the superheroes. Yes. In the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. And granted that, you know, I'm sure they didn't have the money to try to bring back a lot of these other actors. Yeah. For this. That's why I, I completely believe that this whole show should have been an Avengers level event where it should have taken place in theaters it should have taken and should yeah. have just over the course of i don't know like maybe eight movies or whatever it is or, or maybe seven, three or seasons s- slow burn no but i'm saying seven movies that you know get yeah, released yeah. in the theaters and then you know you have the major you know avengers event where now all of a sudden you know, people like, you know, maybe Captain America got replaced. Maybe even Tony Stark got replaced if he wants to come back to the to, to the MCU. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. all these things, you know, that can really make people go, holy crap, we're getting some of these other people that, you know, which made the MCU work for the first 10 years. Yeah. Coming back. Mm-hmm. But instead, they shrunk it down to this one show which honestly was not very well written i think yeah i think they saw a meal and they over they they ordered more than they could eat and they yeah. realized that <laughs> they couldn't really provide what they needed right uh, and 
honestly, if they did it as a show, they could still get those people that back if they wanted to because they're contracted under uh, Disney and Marvel. But the problem is, is just that they wanted to keep it under budget. Like I said, the first three episodes, very good in its content as far as maybe writing. But after that, it kind of swayed off. Mm-hmm. And then I think they realized they ate more than they could chew. And they realized, oh, well, we're going to leave this as is. And they let the uh, director and writers go from what they needed to. They probably used, like I said, AI to fill in the gaps. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I don't think they like did Jurassic that. Jurassic Park, you know, you got to fill yeah. in the gaps somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think they did that. I just think that they just, I've always said it, you know, they just they didn't know the IP very well. They didn't, The fact that they thought they could do this as a spy thriller. I think they failed miserably because let's yeah. be honest. I thought this show was going to be about Nick Fury and who Nick Fury really is, mm-hmm. um, his past, really not just marrying a scroll, but you know, even before that, who maybe how he, you know, from Mrs. Marvel and on, what happened between all those years? Yeah, give instead me a of show. him just yeah, just, instead yeah. of him just going up to the damn station and just oh, you know, I was depressed. You give know, me a show was, that's give me a show that's the 15 years or 20 years before mm. the blip where he's building his network, where he's sending them out to do jobs, where he's, you know, like it, it, that show, there's your spy show. There's yeah. your spy show of, of him building his network of scrolls, choosing who they're going to, who they're going to replace and then sending them out on missions to, to get things for him or to do things for him. And, you know, give us that clip. I guess I don't remember. There's a there's an after credits clip of people collecting the DNA samples at uh, at the Battle of Earth. Somebody I thought that mentioned on some podcast somewhere. I don't they, remember them. They mentioned it. They, yeah, they somebody mentioned probably it. mentioned it. But the thing is, I went through that. I did not see any of that. But they didn't okay. see any of that. Yeah, but that's okay. literally so, yeah. what we get out of the story. Is is that's what Fury was in charge of? Was the scrolls gathering that DNA and to pull right. any get- things? Yeah, give me that show. Give me the show of him, like I said, sending them out on missions and stuff and, and building his network. Give me that as a show. Right. And you've got me hooked. But I'll be this- very honest with you. Even having so when they said that, you know, when they said that, oh, when they said that Nick Fury, the reason Nick Fury is the legend that he is, is because the scrolls were always helping him and and that nobody else knew that. I think that's a very cheap way of killing that character. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. They should have shown they should have they should have actually leveraged that a little bit better and just make it sound like part of the government already knew this. So mm. or that the government was involved too with scrolls. Yeah. It makes me think damage control was a whole thing full of scrolls. Well, that like, would have been yeah. great too. Yeah, or like something where he, like, like where that. He said in, in whatever episode three or four, whatever, where he where he told Fury that he knows about the scrolls, that he was in a briefing, whatever fifteen. I was I was in a briefing fifteen years ago about yeah, scrolls. Yep. Yeah, Rody saying that that I was in a briefing about these scrolls. So the, the U.S. government at least knew that long ago that scrolls were were out there doing this. And yeah. yeah, so I you just, know, show something like that, and like you said, Steve, maybe maybe what they could have done is done two seasons. First season is how he built this network mm-hmm. and they even, they can even show maybe a little bit of flat, you know, some flashbacks of, Hey, after the battle of a, uh, of end game, how some of the scrolls were out there cleaning up damage control was also out there cleaning up. And pro- probably the fact that most of damage control is, you know, yeah. composed of scrolls or something like that, that would have been really great because now right. you're like, Holy crap, this right. is then- really, really, you know, this is what's really happening. And, and then, then the last, you, and then give us like the last episode of the first season, give us the blip and then show us what happened during those five years that Fury was gone and how the network fell apart and how Gravik built up his yeah, own personal or some, network right. or something. Yeah. Give us an episode of that. And then season two, we go into this, this part of it. Cause we, now we know, okay, we got Gravik built his network. <laughs> and now in, in season two, Fury's got to dismantle Gravik's after the five years. And after he comes down from the spaceship, He's got to he's got to dismantle this network because this network that he created. Yeah. Basically. And I think so. the great part would be, hey, the first season, you can also show like we were talking about some of the scrolls around the world. What you know, how they have actually 
uh acclimated to you know society and stuff like that and you know and, so, and how like maybe even kids could be like oh you know i know you want us to go back to it but this is the only world i've known things like that make it where the second season when gravix does do everything he's doing maybe some of these families are going this is not what we wanted mm-hmm. you know yes fury was supposed to get us our home but in the yeah. last 15 out of 15 years this has become our home you know things like that that would have made me go okay this is a lot more interesting than Mm -hmm. what we got you know and then of course we get the last scene of fury you know in episode five that he goes to a grave and gets the dna of (laughs) that's in episode six that part in episode six he gets the dna i'm sorry you're right he he gets the dna and then he goes into the crypt he goes to the crypt and he, he gets the eye patch I guess back. the eye patch. I guess the, I'm like, all and right, the, and the knitted hat. <laughs> and, yeah, and he changes. Like, he changes coats, showing. He, I guess they showing make it seem like, oh, you okay? Nick Fury's back. No, he wasn't. He's got a costume. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it just. And, and I'll talk about when we'll, uh, when we get to episode six. I'll talk about the inconsistent well, eye patch. Yeah, you know, the one thing <laughs> they could have at least had told us is like, hold on, all your pop culture and everything that we loved, that you loved, were really scrolls. So. All the people you hated, like Justin Bieber or Taylor Swift, <laughs> were really scrolls in the hey, real world. Hey, 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 don't pick on T Swizzle. All right. Don't don't pick on T Swizzle. <laughs> I'm just using that. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we move into episode six? Because we did get to that end scene where and Yeah, I, no. By the way, all that- if- if you would have done if they if they would have done what you said where they all of a sudden show like <laughs> Justin Bieber and all that stuff, a lot of people the first thing they would have done was like, didn't they do that in Men in Black? <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's true. And how did they get all that DNA samples into that one little vial? Exactly. <laughs> the thing is, that's how not how DNA works, works. or that you know, or or, or in, and you know, splicing all these d- different DNAs from different species, it just yeah. doesn't work that way. That's why when they did that, I was like. Okay, is there a science behind that? I don't give a shit if you tell me that they got science from the Cree Empire that can do- tell me that. But yeah. don't just say it. on Earth we actually put all this DNA together. Yeah, and we got this one little vial of yellow liquid that looks like pee. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's the gene splicer that the scientists actually use that created for graphic at that point. That right, uh, Sonia winds up like doing and taking care of at that point. Yeah, they, they, they made it specifically so it could identify every independent DNA so that way we could do that. Oh, did you guys get to see the um, the like when uh, they he took that DNA and he was trying to verify it, like all the character names that yeah, were yeah, in there? I, I tried it went yeah. way too fast for me to catch all of them. But I saw Captain America, Winter Soldier. Gamora, um, there was Gamora. Uh, Drax. Uh, uh-huh. It was just like, come on, Thor was in there. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know, was- and honestly, no bot, no one vessel could house that much power without exploding. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, yeah. hopefully, listeners, that will happen to Gaia, so they can eliminate the one true strong. <laughs> well, let's get yeah. let's get let's get to uh, episode six now. Home. Yeah, we'll do that because uh, I definitely want to talk about the Super Scroll thing and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the synopsis for episode six, home, is pretty short. Again, all these have been real short, and this might be where you got your hope from, Mark. All hope for humanity rests on Fury's shoulders. Yeah, simple and to the point. Another short episode. Like I said, like Mark, you and I talked, we talked, we all talked about the beginning, less than 40 minutes with the credits. So, you know, it's so like 30 minutes of actual episode time. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, just it was actually, uh, let me see. It was actually 33 minutes. <laughs> wow. and, and that's, and that's with everything. That's with, no, no, with 33 the, minutes of show with the, uh, okay. with the uh, uh, credits. It was like 37 and a half minutes. Or something. Okay. Okay, so we're looking at like an extended yeah. version of Three's Company. Because <laughs> back then it was like twenty eight minutes, but who cares? <laughs> oh, so my my first big question of 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 this one. This is a spoiler spoiler podcast of this episode, so you better yeah. watch the episode. Right? Is when when did Fury and Gaia switch places? Like he they couldn't have done it in Finland because he had to use his breath and his eye. Right. So it had to be sometime in between Finland and 
him going to the hospital in Russia and her going to the compound. They had to switch. But I wish they had showed us that. Yeah. Well, you know, remember they showed us something. Either they did it after or the reveal that she, or, or something. But after the reveal that she's that she's um, the one in, at the, in the nuclear compound, like as soon as they show her catch that fist, um, maybe they flash back to a scene between the two of them where they're switching places because that, like I said, that line from episode five, where she says, don't worry about me. I'm going to put on a good face. Obviously mm. she's going to put on Fury's face, but she couldn't have done it then because Fury had a whole lot he had to do after that. I mean, I don't, do they change their, does their physiology actually change? <laughs> Would she have had his <laughs> breath? I don't know. Uh, that's just, I, that's just, that was my biggest, my first. Well, big so what do you mean by his breath? Well, he had like, to breathe. He breathed on the, the headstone. It's episode five. He breathes on the headstone to get it to to raise right. up. Yeah. And then when he goes into the crypt, he uses his eye, his good eye. Wait, he's one of the, one of the eyes. He used one of the eyes to open the uh, the thing with oh, his. I coat see what you're talking about. Patch. Yeah. So I'm just asking, when did they switch places? I think it was I, after that. I, I would think it have to be, but it's just one of those things that just one of those in the so many. This episode was just so. Con- Frustrated. All over the place. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. But uh, the the f- when you say that, Steve, I I really honestly think that Fury was actually he made a phone call from the hospital. That's why he stepped away. And then later on, when he comes back, he probably made the phone call to Gaia, put this into motion, and then Gaia went to Russia. Well, no, because it's, it's he, he got the phone call from Gravit telling him to bring the DNA. Yeah. So then he had to use Sonya's connections, mm-hmm. right, to get to get to Finland to get the DNA. And right. Sonya's there with him in Finland. So I think they're coordinating all this stuff because then she's the one that calls the hospital and tells Rhodey that Fury is on his way. And, and Rhodes, Rhodey is like, well, we've got I've got whatever, 40 men here that are that are going to protect the president. She's like, what is that target practice? To Fury, you know? <laughs> it's true, target um, practice. <laughs> uh, but uh, it did look like he was he was carrying not a regular pistol. It looked like he was carrying like he was shooting maybe knockout darts or something at these yeah, guys. Yeah, it looked like darts to me too. Like he was trying to like just in- incapacitate them. Right, not kill yeah. them. The only one that he actually killed is, is Rhodes when he shoots when he shoots Rhodes in the head. But correct. But yeah, I, th- th- that hospital scene with the president uh, Fury. Once he gets the president, right, he keeps saying. The rebel schools. He keeps he keeps singling out like we talked about this little terrorist network that Gravik had. Right. He keeps yeah. he keeps singling out the rebel scrolls. The rebel scrolls are the ones who are enemies. But all the president hears is scrolls because then he goes on the TV. You know, there mm. at the end and is like, "We're gonna mo- we're gonna kill all of them. We're gonna murder. We I don't want them on my planet." And all this and Fury's like, "That wasn't our deal." And the president's like, "I don't care if you really care about these scrolls, get them off my planet." <laughs> so, right. And which so, kind of leads me to believe so, which is interesting because when you when you see the president, this is a very different president than who um, like on the what is it the um, the new movie that's coming out with Harrison Ford, uh, not the Thun no Thunderbolts. Oh no, it's not the Thunderbolts. It, it's Captain America: Brave New World. No, no, um, there's the Thunderbolts also, or something oh, like Thunderbolts that. Thunderbolts is coming out, yes. Right, and that's going to have General Ross, who eventually becomes, I think, the president or something like that. So something tells me that this move that this president's doing is not going to be seen as a popular thing, and he probably loses the presidency. Well, that's what then you're, you're General Ross says. probably gets into it or something like that. So that's what it seems like, but then... Here's here's what really gets me about this the, the last episode. I was at least hoping to see Maria Hill because Maria Hill is actually present in the Marvels. Well, a and lot I guess of now that we're speculating, it's a uh, it's before this event, yeah, right? The, so now it's either are... before this event or Maria Hill's a damn scroll, <laughs> or it's gonna be or it's gonna be a flashback, or yeah, I think what I think TV podcast industries brought up that the Marvels is supposed to take place before. Secret, Secret invasion. invasion, invasion. Yeah, but it still doesn't. It's still, yeah. They need to get their act together. It's just, yeah. yeah it's all I over was, the I place. Was, I was glad to see Martin Freeman, you know, alive, his character alive, and and yeah, and out there. And we we got to see Don Cheadle, the real Rhodes. So we know that that he's back. 
Yeah. But it means that he's been he's been replaced in secret. Uh, uh, what is it? Civil a civil war. war. Yeah, because he's wearing the same gown that he was wearing at the very end of Civil War when he was okay. getting his MRI and X rays done. Okay, and that, they put that him makes in sense that. to me. So right. a lot of people were speculating on the internet, and mind you, listeners, yeah, we're days away since the episode aired. A lot of people have their their viewpoints, but that that gown is a dead giveaway right there, especially the yeah. look of shock when mm-hmm. even when Guy says and and when uh what was it Martin Freeman looks at him and goes Captain How long Rhodes. Have you- you're here Colonel too, Rhodes, and, he, and then Rhodey Colonel. tries to get up and walk, and he can't walk. And she goes, "Oh, it, meaning that he didn't even know." Right and now, it's like, wait, there's a Rhodey out there that never knew that Tony died for the world. Yeah. And mm-hmm. on top of that, what the hell was a Thanos, and what was a snap? <laughs> and you have all this wow, stuff. Wow, that's yeah. a good point too. Think that, about that, it. You have a character that pretty much missed out on half of whatever happened in the MCU in the first 10 years, where you're like, he should they should have shown a scene where it's like, what do you mean, Tony? I mean, that was his best friend. Tony mm-hmm. died. So damn, show me something where like maybe Nick Fury it takes, you know, Ro- you know, Rody to, you know. The, the grave, wherever he's grave buried, or, or his grave, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, something yeah. where like he has to explain to him. I was like, yeah, you know, this happened. The snap happened. We lost Captain America. We lost Black uh, Widow. Black Widow. We lost all these people. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, that would have been a great scene. I think that would have been a fantastic scene where I, you know, mm-hmm. it's like Rhodey trying to deal with that fact. Now, how is the MCU going to deal with that? Uh, you know, deal with that one point. Not only that, but correct me if I'm wrong. Good. You know, all these people were in the island too, right? You know, the ones that that those were the people that were I'm, in the you're island talking in Russia, right? Yeah, the ones well, the radiation is a problem with me because apparently you see Again, Gaia yeah. faint, fainting like as Fury didn't take right. the iodine pills right. and faking that they're dying, but yet these people were in captivity underground with with all this radiation around them for what? months if not years, years. There's, an, there's an easy there's an easy answer to that though they were shielded. Com- your disbelief they were comics shielded. yeah they, they, comics they were shielded whatever room whatever room <laughs> they kept them in whatever stasis field they had them in uh was protected from i thought the same thing though i'm like oh wait a minute wouldn't these people be dead <laughs> like 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 you're gonna like she's flipping all these switches to, to bring them back to bring them back to life and she goes oh Oh yeah, radiation poisoning. Everybody's dead. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, uh, that was so just uh, again another thing that they definitely missed. Yeah, uh, at least tell you know say something was like, shouldn't we all be dead or something like that, <laughs> and, <laughs> or yeah. whatever it is. And for Gaia to say you were, you know, the stasis field was protecting you from the radiation. That That's would be it. a quick That's line. You that to would say. Fix it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> would fix it, and not, and we wouldn't be having this discussion, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of things. There were a lot of things in this oh. in this episode. Like I said, the inconsistent eye patch. Like one scene he's wearing it, one scene he's not wearing it. Then at the end he's wearing it again, and he's wearing the be like in one scene he's got the beanie but no eye patch, and then he's got eye patch no beanie, and then at the end he's got beanie and eye patch. And I'm like going, I, I gotta definitely, I gotta <laughs> definitely check that out just to uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he's talking, I'll, I'll put it like I'll put it this way for sure because I watched it when he's when he's talking to the president on the phone. And he tells him you know, this that that's the move of a one term president. He has no right. eye patch. He has no eye patch on, uh, and he's wearing the beanie. When he attacks the hospital, did he have the beanie on? And the eye, I don't remember, but yeah, check that out because at the end, it's it's very inconsistent whether yeah. he's wearing the eye patch or not. And I'm like going because you can see his eye moving when yeah, he's right. talking to the president. That all along. <laughs> yeah, when he's talking to the president, I'm like. Oh, make up your mind, Fury. Wear the patch or don't. But no, you man. know, uh, well, I mean, I'm watching it as I'm talking to you guys, you know, silently on the side, and I'm waiting right. for that scene to come up, and I'll let yeah. you know if he is okay. or not. If but. I missed it, if I missed something, because it really looked like he's not wearing it when he's talking to the president, and then when he meets Vara, he's wearing it, and I'm just okay. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's well, uh, it's like all over the place. They, I don't think they had continuity in place. Somebody probably lost what? their job now. <laughs> it's like they spent they spent all this money on the fight, you know the super super the super duper scroll fight. Oh yeah, uh, they spent all that money and all that CGI to make that fight that everything else kind of fell to the wayside. Well, you I know think. what? Let's get into that because yeah. uh, so first of all, 
the super scrolls, at least in comics, were supposed to be have the powers of the Fantastic Four. Four powers. One, and that's one it. scroll that was a one super scroll. scroll. Right. right. That was the thing, Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, Reed Richards, the Elastic Man, and you got the Human Torch by Johnny Storm. And right. they were able to use and intertwine those powers, and that's what it was. And then later on, they did Secret Invasion, where scrolls were adapted to mimic certain characters or some of these heroes independently, like Spider-Woman, Reed Richards alone, or even Iron Man, or Captain Marvel, or whoever it was. Right. And that's how that, that Secret Invasion was. But with this, now it's, all, all right, we're going to throw all the DNA in you. Gravix got it all, and so does Gaia, but Gaia knows how to use it like it's like her left well, hand. That, right. And that's the thing that I was, you know, so it's so, but not only that. So I spoke to somebody that really knew the, the topics of scrolls and stuff like that. And he says, first of all, the super scrolls, whenever they gained all those powers, they would actually die off because they mm -hmm. couldn't handle oh, all that. Which right? I think might ha happen to Gaia in time. And could have happened to get graphic. So that's a way of getting rid of Gaia at this point. Right. Yeah. So, but the fact, of, the fact of the matter is that all of a sudden you had, and to me, you know, that last scene with, uh, with graphics and a uh, fury, mm -hmm. I have to say that, uh, Kingsley really did a great job. I mean, at the acting part of it. Right. And here oh. I thought, okay, man, this, this is actually a good scene. The dialogue and, was amazing in it. Right? How but he focused on the skin. I took this, this was the last mission I did. I killed for you, my hero. And it's right. going on in this massive dialogue, which is so good. Well, yeah. and that's it is so and good. It we, gets, get, we get oh, like overshadowed by a superhuman battle. Of, yeah, no, it doesn't. It, what really sucks about this whole thing is that it was oh okay, you have Nick Fury and you have and all of a sudden they cheapen it out by saying oh no, it's Gaia, and it's like come on, man, that that's a that's cheap writing there. And that's the thing too about there's a line that she that Gaia as Fury says that makes me wonder if it's true or not, because mm. uh, what he says is he says, I figured out in a, in just a few years that there was no planet out there for you. And so if that's true, again, that cheapens, if, if that's something that Fury told her that she'd be able to say, or she's just making it up I, either way that cheapens what Fury did. Cause it means that, that he basically kept them in the dark you know, we've been questioning, why did they not find, why could Captain Marvel and Fury not find them a home? Well, right. he just revealed, he says, well, about a few years in, I realized there was no planet out there for you. So now I'm going to give you all this power and I want you to go conquer another planet. And I'm like, what? Seriously? Well, I, honestly, if you think <laughs> about it, Fury like, I want himself you is a user. He used these people because at the very end scene, he goes, oh yeah, we were able to make uh, some arrangements with the Kree. And it's just well, like, no, he says they're willing to have peace talks. Peace talks. Yeah, they're having peace right. talks with the Kree. So that might actually become something where, like, if they do find peace, that the scrolls might be able to have a world in the Kree, Emp in the Kree Empire or something right. like that. At the very, or go uh, back to Skrullos or whatever. At the very beginning you know. of Endgame, we already saw a planet in it that is populatable. It's Thanos' garden area. Mm. This, this, this is there. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is a, this is a show that doesn't make any sense because look, with, through Guardians of the Galaxy, you, they've been to many worlds. You're telling me that you couldn't call the Guardians of the Galaxy and say, "Hey, hey, Peter, Quill. I, I'm yeah. trying to find a world for the scrolls. Is there something out there that you could see?" Yeah, yeah. That, but no, they didn't do that. Again, lazy fucking writing. That's what I call it. It it's is just lazy writing. You watch Gaia, like I'm looking at Gaia right now trying to fight with, you know, and all these different powers and all these things. And you're right. It's like, how the hell did you learn how to use these powers? It's like, well, yeah, sleep like Mantis or, yeah. or, or having the frost giants frosty arm go through his chest. Yeah. Well, she did the phasing. Captain Marvel's powers too at that point. Well, she yeah. did the phasing. She did the phasing thing. I read an article. I, I saw an article real quickly earlier today that was talking about some of the powers she used. And I watched it when I watched it uh, again today. I saw it when he throws the car at her. She uses that phasing power that that ghost woman right. and Ant Man had. Oh yeah, right where yeah. she where she where the the car goes right through where she goes right through the car. However you want to say it, you yeah. know. So she's using powers that we didn't even know were available to her. Like, how does she know? How does she just? Them? 
Yeah. yeah and how does she just instinctively, it, it, it just, I could see Gravik using some of these paths. No, because he got them right then also. Because that's yeah. when I realized yeah, that it was Gaia. Yeah, and just put his like tree trunk hand into that guy. Yeah, yeah well, if you he, really think about it, I mean, basically Gaia became the most powerful character in the, all of the MCU. Yeah, and absolutely. it's like, come on, man, that uh, that that's just stupid. I yeah. mean, who wrote this? I mean, and AI. you know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's AI. Listen, I mean, I'm all love for the fact that, you know, these writers are on strike and they should get paid and stuff like that. But Fuck you, man. If you don't, if you can't write something the right way, and you write and you go against mm-hmm. what the IP really had, you know, is, and you go uh, go against, I don't know, 60, 70 years of comic book stories and all these yeah. things, just because you want to make a name for yourself and say, well, you know what? Screw it. If I screwed it up, I just move on to the next, you know, the next uh, project I have. Well, guess what? You might be able to do that, but you just disappointed a whole bunch of fans. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Chris Chris Claremont actually dealt with that in the '80s with during the X Men run too, because he had to change a whole bunch of things, right. which kind of screwed mm-hmm. up. So it's like it was kind of like a rewrite and restructure at that point, and they wound up doing that later on in the '90s with X Men as well. So uh, just to use a reference point, they've done it in other comics also. Uh, and other story plots. And I'm sure you listeners who are comic readers will feel the same way. It's like, wait a minute, but we had that story and, oh, they summed that up as like a what if, or it's an alternate universe or, you know, if they decide out of the blue and I'll laugh at Marvel if they do this, but the one elephant in the room that we have to deal with after this is when we get the Thunderbolts. Okay. Is Valentina Allegra de Fontaine a scroll, and that's what her ulterior motive was through graphic to get all these superheroes together, like the fake Captain America from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, and get all these other characters that are going to be in there. Uh, like, I, I'm I'm curious, was the Crimson this is Guardian one of those, a scroll? Yeah, this is one of those things where this particular show makes you question a lot of the things from that you know the MCU has done, and mm-hmm. while granted that. You know, by having scrolls impersonate people, then yes, you should question everything because now you're like, oh, but if they're if this is the last show and they're not doing anything, this sucks because it, now yeah. you left a whole bunch of people saying, well, what about this and what about that? And OK, Rhodey, you know, was, you know, in Civil War, that's when they grabbed them or because the only thing they're concentrating now on is Kang the Conqueror. Right. So, not even that now they're they're literally. They're sidestepping. They're only working with the IP that they already started putting into production, which would be the Thunderbolts, uh, the Marvels, and whatever else comes after that. They're not well, really we'll putting we'll those see. into fruition. We'll see what happens with Kang because now that they found Jonathan Majors, you know, uh, innocent, innocent of all the charges. Hmm. Uh, oh, because, see, I didn't uh, even know what happened or what he was charged. I didn't know, know any of this. He I was charged with, uh, you know, like uh, I think it was a uh, sexual violence or something like that. Oh, I mean, it was okay. it was, it was, it was uh, pretty he, bad. He basically, uh, uh, they're saying that he attacked his girlfriend at that time. She came around, hmm. said something different. Uh, people had videos. Some people didn't. Then they stated that she did something to him. Then she turned right. around and changed her tune. So okay. we don't know. And a lot of what Marvel and Disney are waiting for is the ultimate outcome. But right. uh, as always, there's always a way to write around it because a lot of people were not, even the fans were not happy with the idea of having Kang as the ultimate baddie for secret right. wars. So they could have easily used, uh, the beyonder or, uh, I'm forgetting the alien that looks like a bug, a Nihilus. And mm-hmm. that that was another opportunity as well. They could always just state this whole Kang thing through throughout Loki and everything was still a multiverse thing with time and they have issues with it. They right. could. And I think they should yeah. have just kept that. At, they should have kept the Kang part at, at, as Disney shows. Mm. And then again, I think the secrets, uh, secret invasion should have been a major event. But if not, that's when you kick it, you kick it into high gear and go, you know what? We have to introduce the fantastic four as soon as possible so then because fantastic four also has major comic book events oh yeah so you know what then that will be the next thing once as soon as you introduce that 
Yeah. You can then, it, they, what they should have done is introduce the Fantastic Four first, where now you have scrolls mm. in the Fantastic Four, and then the whole secret invasion thing could have happened. That would have been fucking fantastic to do. That would have been amazing. Yeah. yeah but yeah. somebody jumped the gun and decided, oh, let's do a spy thriller. Yeah. Um, listen, so now- it, worked for, it worked for Star Wars with Andor. It didn't work <laughs> with this. <laughs> no. But with that, with that thought of getting back to Secret Invasion episode six, that mm-hmm. end scene between Gaia and Sonia Farnsworth really sets it up for if they get a sec. I don't know if they're going to get a second season or, not, or do a I movie. don't think they are. It, it really sets up, but it sets up future MCU things because Sonia says, well, your people are going to need a leader and your people are going to need someone to rally around. So obviously she's trying to push Gaia to become this new leader of the scrolls that are out there and bring them together. And so I, I don't know what's going to come of that if we're ever going to get anything of that but that I would doubt be it because this was the lowest rated mcu show on disney mm-hmm. plus ever even okay. on rotten tomatoes it, it shows the lowest rating okay. overall yeah well, and she also uh, and still has the doctor that's so. including falcon and the winter soldier which got slammed because people were against the whole black lives matter thing because right. of how they were presenting it then i enjoyed it and i love the representation but that's my opinion but with this, it, it was it showed in the writing of how bad it was. And Steve, you and I covered Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and that espionage aspect was written very well, mm-hmm. as oh, well yeah. as Hawkeye. And yeah. and we got some mobster stuff going on within Hawkeye, but this I they fell short. I, yeah. I think they uh, need to uh, say, okay, this is not canon, and we can move on, and we don't. It, talk about scrolls again unfortunately they'll they'll never do that where all of a sudden they backpedal and say oh this was maybe a different universe it'll be great because well, you know what that with shield agents <sighs> of shield is considered non-canon now <laughs> i know but eight yeah and it's but funny it i read an article network. it was a whole you know i go ahead rob go i ahead. was gonna say i read an article there that was saying that the whole secret invasion thing was already done in agents of shield it was a different uh alien or whatever it was or whatever it was but it was yes. done much better than what they did here yeah, and they had seasons upon seasons to work with it right but the whole <laughs> the whole thing is that when you look at something like this um now we have unanswered questions they still haven't they still haven't even mentioned the big freaking head and hand coming out of the ocean, the Pacific Ocean from the Eternals. <laughs> you know, these are like all things that they decide to do. And all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you know what? Let's just going to toss that aside. No, and so they're, they're going to use it. It's going to have adamantium in it. And then that <laughs> will have... <laughs> uh, I just I just know that like they'll do these things. And all of a sudden they just kind of leave people hanging. I was yeah. I was one of the first people to say, listen, I'm going to give the show a chance. I mean, you got. Samuel L. Jackson, you got yeah. Amelia Clark, you got, you know, you got all these great people in there. It has to be good. Apparently it wasn't. I mean, yeah, I, I fell off. Honestly, I was hopeful for the first three episodes by episode four. It's when I started to be like, OK, I'm concerned about this. And then the last two episodes, I'm like, mm, they really needed to rethink this. And yeah, they should have taken some more time. Have, well, yeah, give it some time or if not, have people review it beforehand you know you do this with movies already right you, get, you sit people down in the theater and say well, what do you think well i didn't like that or that or that because you have a problem with this and this and this mm-hmm. and then people they'll take that into consideration and they had to do that with the marvels i'm just wondering because whenever they do test screenings unfortunately they never do test screenings with real fans and i can understand too because real fans yeah. are going to be the, the biggest dicks out there oh yeah but- mm-hmm. At least people that are in the know, as opposed to, oh, I'm just going to take the average person that doesn't know shit about Marvel and see if they like it. And they're like, oh, yeah, it was great. And they're like, okay, they're less released. And it's like, no, man, you got to you gotta also, you know, put some fan service there. But if you and if you're going to put the fan service, it has to be smartly done. Well, mm-hmm. they, what they should always do. And, uh, you know, this is my idea and I've had it for years to do a screening for something that you're trying to make when it comes to pop culture, conventions are your guide. Sit them down. Hey, this is something that we're working for. We're only bringing in 20 people. You get to watch this, but you can't say you have to sign this NDA, but give us your honest opinion. Have them watch it. Take notes. 
because those true fans will give you the most uh, honest opinion. And it, and it happens all the time. So I don't know if Disney is actually arrogant enough to bypass that and say, well, you know what? We're just going to give this to fans because you know what? We're Disney and they'll eat up anything. that. Well, guess what? People didn't like this. By the way, uh, Steve, he did have mm. the, the little beanie in the hospital. Okay, so, so yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's yeah. inconsistent on beanie. He no beanie. didn't. He it didn't no... have it at the very end when he goes up into you know into space. And he's got the iPad, but he's got the eye patch on. He has the eye patch on. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. Make up your mind. So yeah. I'm okay with that because it just means he just took off the hat. That's all it means. He doesn't have to have the hat on. You know, throughout the end. Sometimes you gotta you know let the ball head uh you know breathe a little. I know. I just... <laughs> and unlike mine, that got burnt while I was at work the other day. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I came into work and uh, one of the guys from the other installers were like, hey, Mark, you Dominican now? Why? Because your head is so brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just it, it's just sad that this show could have been so great. It yeah. really could have. And no, you're it, right. It, I mean, it, it, so here's the thing. Uh, this, uh, this, was this whole series necessary? If the Kree are willing to talk about peace, because if they were, this whole show just like goes it down be the tube. Bypassed, <laughs> and I, I have to laugh too for the fact that the way Disney is trying to market things now, uh, they are now allowing it to be on Hulu and a couple of other services, even on ABC. Like they're really releasing Miss Marvel on ABC. On yeah, because they got to make TV. money. So uh, they're going to get more of an audience at this point because a lot of people who don't subscribe will watch it being like, oh, it's free. I could watch it now. Yeah. Mm. But it's not it's not about getting an audience. It's about the fact that they don't they're not getting any more subscribers and they're losing money. So that now they're licensing a lot of their stuff to other uh, networks and things like that in order for them yeah. to actually make money back, because that was the biggest mistake that these streaming services, th you know, did was thinking, oh. If I keep all of our IP in one central location, yeah. then that means I'm going to have everybody come there. Well, yeah, you kind of did, but you still have to pay these actors and writers and directors, you know, uh, residuals. <laughs> um, and guess what? That they just weren't making money. So what are they doing now? They're licensing a lot of their stuff. They're not, they're not even putting it on their stuff. It's like, let's put it somewhere else because at least we know those people are paying us. Very true. You know, yeah. so that's one of the reasons they did that. I mean, so that uh, that's what I've seen. I've seen that. I saw End uh Endor actually. I think the first couple of episodes or something like that was also, you know, in mm -hmm. um in ABC or something like that. Oh wow. Okay. You know, because remember that if they put it on network television, what's gonna happen? Advertisers. Very are true. going to yeah, advertisers are gonna be basically paying for that. So by the way. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but I just couldn't kiss a scrawl, man. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> she has those gnarly teeth. Like, you know, if you tell me that she looks like Gamora with a little bit of a chin, you know, wrinkle, <laughs> sure. But yo, this this chick was not very. <laughs> this is not a very good looking woman, man. <laughs> Tickle my ears. Hey, tickle my ears. You know, <laughs> I, you know, all, I am all for alien love, but come on, man. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Rob, to to talk about screeners now, we we you and I, uh, I was on what what you covered for the Last Jedi. Uh -huh. So, uh, do you think that that would have like the Star Wars series that came out with after Abrams put out the the Force Awakens, do you think they would have benefited from screeners from fans that at conventions? To... Oh my God, yes! But the problem the problem with that is that when you do first of all, when you spend that much money and you say, "Hey, we did this," that movie has so many things wrong with it that it would have been going back to the drawing board. And how does Disney recover that money? Yeah, uh, their whole thing was arrogance. It was just pure arrogance. They said, "Hey, yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, Force Awakens made all this money, and the problem was that the freaking movie made one point three billion dollars anyway. So yeah. it, whether uh, you know it was above ninety percent with the uh, with the critics, but it was still in the forty percent with the audience. It still made one point three billion. So they decided to go on with a third movie that was just still crap, and that made also money." <laughs> 
Yeah, I liked all three of those movies. So you guys just oh, you, the, the, uh, you definitely don't want to hear my podcast on uh, the last Jedi, man. Cause... Steve doesn't want to be on there. Uh, yeah, I, I I always say this when it comes to the IP, and I said this the last time when you it was you Zach and Frank and I, and I my feeling is with Star Wars, I liked aspects of all those, even the prequels. Didn't mean I loved them, but I did enjoy aspects of them. So I took away from it. So they did something a little bit right, but with mostly for the part of nostalgia. But right. yeah, the uh, yeah, I, I think Marvel is in for a rude awakening uh, coming soon when it comes to all this. When with their you know for the fact that they had to reshoot a lot of the Marvels recently after they had right. a screener and people backlashed during mm. the screeners. So they had to redo those, and that's what did we're you getting. see the uh, Did you see the latest trailer of the Marvels? Yes, I did. So I'm they, sad. They a lot of people stuff away out of there from the right. original trailer too. I mean, mm. a lot of people are excited about it because they're like, "Oh, you know, it's uh, it looks like fun." But I, you know what? Uh, until I sit in the audience and actually yeah. go, "Holy crap!" This surprised me. I, you know, it's no longer the how is it the oh if it's a marvel movie i definitely got to go because you know it's going to be good yeah that, you, you, that you're stuff. at that point of speculations at this point because it's that the marvel it's, machine is wearing down it's at, just like uh dc well, well dc what they what was their biggest hit aquaman uh i think aquaman was the aquaman, biggest hit. aquaman was their biggest i think it's like that made over a billion dollars or something yeah. like that yeah, the first Aquaman. Yeah, so, no, it's, <laughs> it's just they they haven't been able to survive since, but I, I think the Marvel machine needs to uh, retool a little bit when it comes to writing. Uh, I think the talent's already out there as far as actors, and when it comes to CG, it's just the writing aspect of it, and making it's the writing really aspect better. of it. It's the uh, it's the fact that first of all, don't treat your visual effects teams. Like, like shit, yeah, like yeah. garbage, and try to you know pump out so much for so little. But it's also the fact that I think Oppenheimer and Barbie proved to Disney and everybody else, and shit, even Warner Brothers, you know, because Warner Brothers, you know, is the one that did Barbie. Yeah, that when you have the right people in a project who are passionate about that project and respect the project, correct you're going to get a good movie. But if you all of a sudden are arrogant enough to think that you know the project, but you don't, because from what I heard, Barbie was going to be done with Barbie, uh, what's her name, Amy Schumer, hmm. um, years and years ago when another studio uh, had the rights. And you could see, you could tell what the, that was going to be a disaster. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, of course, Margot Robbie does look like a Barbie, but the thing is that you, you, I mean, Margot, it's actually Margot Robbie, the one that's really responsible, I think, for a lot of the success of Barbie because she also produced it. Mm. So, but there's an IP that there was so much love behind it. And guess what? Everybody went, I mean, it was amazing. And let me tell you, I grew up working when I was in high school, grew up working in Toys R Us. The one aisle that I hated the most was Barbie's. <laughs> because one at the end of the night you have to put all these toys away because of course kids come in take toys mom buy me this toy and then mom says no put that down they put it somewhere else um and every time i went into the barbie aisle the first thing i said is like what is it that you do that, that you have fucking mansions corvettes and everything are you like a high class <laughs> whore or something <laughs> i don't know I mean, come on. And then all of a sudden she has all these different careers. I'm like, no, no human being has all those careers. And it was always pink. So I was one of those people that really hated it. But I loved the movie because, one, it, it is a very uh, female empowerment type of movie. Yeah. But the fact was that it had a good story behind it. The, the acting was great. Ryan Gosling was fantastic on it. You had a team of people that really took their time and, and you know to do something like this. And Warner Brothers should be actually looking at themselves and going, "All right." And I and I guarantee you this: Warner Brothers probably looked at that and looked over at James Gunn and says, "If you cannot produce that same kind of excitement that Barbie brought in, you're <laughs> out. You're out." Because it was so great to see people in the theaters. I mean, first of all, it packed the theaters. 
mm. Oppenheimer and of course Barbie packed theaters, which is all, all all you know the things that we want. Yeah. But you saw so many people engage. You saw so many people wearing pink to support the movie. I mean, it was just like a sea of pink. But the beauty <laughs> of that was that then they will, as soon as they were done with that movie, you would see them go now to see Oppenheimer, which is a completely opposite movie of what Barbie would be. Right. But they supported that, too. And those two movies coming out at the same time, I mean, the, what they were projected to make, it, you know, it exceeded they that exceeded so it big time. far. But those are movies that were th- those uh, like Oppenheimer to me is a film. Yeah, that's a film that you sit down. That was something that was actually, you know, done very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, sound design. Fantastic. But now you're looking at something like Barbie, which, of course, is for kids and things like that. But adults enjoyed it because if it had a lot of adult humor in there, but it was well written and it kept you engaged. Uh, I saw people with, you know, with a. With T-shirts that had combination, you know, ba- uh, 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 Barbenheimer, Barbie Barbie yeah, Barbenheimer, <laughs> something like yeah. that. I, there was one that had the logo of Mattel because the logo of Mattel is like this pink with like uh, all these little stars going or like these little points going all around it, mm-hmm. and in the middle, in Barbie in Barbie font, it says, "I have be uh, what is it? I have become death, the, the yeah. destroyer of worlds." And I was like, that's the best T-shirt I've ever seen. Because <laughs> from far away, you th- you think it says Barbie. But when you read it, it's actually the Oppenheimer thing. And I it was like, that's the kind of stuff that I miss. That's the kind of stuff that, you know, we all want. We want to be excited to go to the movies. We want to be engaged in the movies. We want yeah. people. And when you keep putting garbage out like this, like this whole secret invasion. And when you put <laughs> garbage out like, you know, like The Flash and some of the other movies. I mean, the Flash. I think the biggest thing that uh, made the Flash suffer was uh, Ezra Miller. Yeah, mm-hmm. that being that. yeah, that being said, but you see stuff like you know uh, Black Adam. You see things like you know the Shazam movie, Ant Man and the Wasp. You know, Quantum Mania. You're like, come on, man. I mean, movies are expensive <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, don't, don't make me waste money on this stupid stuff because it's you know like what? Going to the theater if you go into a Broadway play now, and then to take a whole family, it's going to cost you over like 150 to 200 bucks for a night out. <laughs> In a Broadway play, try like over 600. A uh, Broadway, I mean, a ticket is about 100 bucks each. You got a family of four, you're already in the four to 500 dollar range, and you haven't even gone to dinner yet. I know that. <laughs> I know that. So. Mm. Yeah, no, it's just, you know, the, it, it, movies are expensive. It's all expensive. But, I, you know, these movies also, I think these studios got to stop, really stop saying, you know what? We'll put it out in a, in a month and a half in streaming. <laughs> well, that's what happened to Flesh. Look at that. It came out on streaming. How soon? <laughs> as soon as I put the op- episode out on the podcast, it, it came was out. A- <laughs> for, came streaming. out streaming. Uh, for streaming. Yeah. Yeah. No, I- I know that uh, what is it? Uh, Transformers is already out on Paramount Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so fast based upon it, what they projected and what they could get, and then if they can't make any money, they pull it. But all right, well, uh, I, as you listeners could tell, I'll, you know, Rob and myself <laughs> were not big fans at the very end of uh, Secret <laughs> Invasion. Steve, you were a bit, a little bit. Hopeful. I mean, I, I'm still hopeful that they could do something with what they set up. Maybe, uh, but you know, I thought the same thing about Moon Knight. We haven't seen any movement from Moon right. Knight. Even either. that, yeah, not a word. I love that. Was Moon a Knight really was good. That was a really Moon good Knight. series. Oh, it was great. It was amazing, and they've done nothing with it since. So I was uh, not a fan of that one either. But okay, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. Everybody has their own fandom. That's the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. But yeah, it's uh, it, everybody has difference of opinion. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew a lot of people who hated Guardians of the Galaxy. Mainly, I understood recently why, because of how the treatment of animals and things of, and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So I understand from their viewpoint and why they protested and didn't like it. Oh, uh, wow. I I was weighing more on the side of this is fantasy and fiction. And uh, yeah, it does tug on your heartstrings when yeah. it comes to stuff like that. The treatment yeah. of animals. You mean the CG animals that they were using? Yes. That they're yes. not real and they don't exist in real life? Sure. sure. You know, yeah. But I, just... my, my, I, I understand from their viewpoint and their feeling. Yeah. You yeah. know, aside from that, we're going to move right along into since we're, we're breaking down to the end of the podcast. 
And uh, obviously no feedback was given. Uh, we're not going to bring up news. This is already too long for just two episodes <laughs> as it is. But uh, we'll go into some uh, podcast recommendations like we like to do and then where you can find us. So, Steve, any podcast recommendations you could think of? You know, I, I just I've been listening to The Psychologists Are In. It's a psych rewatch podcast with Timothy M. Mudson and uh, Maggie Lawson. And it's it's great. They just put out. I haven't listened to it yet. They just put out a reaction uh, to the SAG, the writers SAG after a strike, uh, probably talking about what the future is for their podcasts. But uh, so that's that's one. And I would definitely recommend Talkville, uh, which is yeah. Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum. I don't know how they're still putting out content. Maybe they recorded episodes prior to the strike, but they talked about the writers strike in this last episode. So I can only assume that they must have had some in the can or something. No, well, they haven't. I, well, the thing is, is they haven't re-released Smallville in any major form. Oh, right. so, so does that clear them to talk about it, even though it allows them? So okay. if, if the company has not re-released it, let's say an anniversary DVD, and they're okay. there promoting it. Now, mind you, when it comes to convention land that's out there, that people go to conventions, Monster Mania is this weekend, and they are doing a Lost Boys reunion with Kiefer Sutherland and right. and a few other Alex Winter and a few other people. All they're going to be there is for is for literally autograph signings and uh, photo ops, but mm. they can't really talk about anything else on the panel when it comes to the okay. movie. So yeah, so those would be my two. Talk did he Bill have? And... Did he have any kind of celebrities on there on, on his on his podcast? Smallville or talk on Talkville on Talkville? Yeah, they bring in they actually the will, writers will, will, will the call Al and Michael the create the creators. They've had. Right. Uh, They've had John Snyder on there a couple times already. No, but I'm saying like after the strike. Oh, no, I don't see... know. I don't know because they're putting out – they put out every Wednesday. And I was surprised to see a new episode this Wednesday. Episodically, I just, yeah. Right. I just listened to it and they talked about can we call Al and Michael even though he, they said something about they might be on the picket line. So it definitely was during the writer's part of the strike okay. that they recorded They recorded that podcast. Right. Um. So I have, I have to wait till next week to see if anything new – I think uh, I think when it comes to like so if they did a podcast as long as they're not promoting any mm -hmm. movie that they're actually doing let's Which say they're just talking about remember, themselves yeah. or they probably talked about maybe some you know part of their career or something or something completely different I think it's okay but if uh, as long as it's not promoting yeah. what they're doing cuz normally you get on these podcasts to kind of promote yourself you know right yeah no they're not doing talk they're shows not doing or any, anything like doing that yeah current projects and I think yeah I think so. it's more of a I think in, in this case, I think he's doing it more of a, uh, hey, listen, I'm just going to get people on and we just talk about shit. I don't know. Talking about like, you know, go to the supermarket. Oh, they're talking about the episodes and it's great. It's But Talkville is a great one to listen to. So I definitely recommend I've seen that it one. once in a while. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Yeah, they're, they're really good. For us and our friends out there in the podcast universe, I want to highly recommend TV Podcast Industries with their coverage. They did cover Secret Evasion. They move right along it quickly. They are getting screeners, obviously, and are able to move right along into Good Omens Season 2. We will be covering it weekly, episodically, so you'll get a, a new episode next week as we start it. As far as guests are going to be on, hosts, not sure I'll be on, but I knew our friend Lara's willing. Steve, you said you were interested. Mm -hmm. Anybody else uh, in our group that we know of? From the Zed Heads. And this is where I go into my promotion for Podcastica. So podcastica.com, all the net all that podcast from that network. Obviously, Strange Indeed, Run for Your Lives. We got the cast of us, which actually finished up Dead City. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think there's a Wilhelm and Podcastica collaboration that's going on, which is called Barbenheimer. And you're gonna get <laughs> uh the coverage on Wilhelm for I forget what it was. It's Steve Barbie. Ben and, ben and Christian did Barbie. And I think Jason and uh, his crew did Oppenheimer or it might be the other way around. Yeah. I think sure. it might be the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I think Ben and Kristen are doing Oppenheimer and then whoever else is doing uh, Barbie, but to listen to them back and back. So it's a collaboration between the podcast network and Wilhelm. So right. check that out. So, well, now we're right into where you could listen to us. <laughs> so, Rob, where can people listen to you? 
Sure. Uh, before I tell them where I listen to uh, my recommendations for anybody out there who wants to listen to a really good podcast it's called The Town with uh, Matthew Bellany. Uh, he used to be a journalist with, uh, I think, Entertainment Weekly and things like that. He does half an hour shows, but he really he really gets into the nitty gritty of the business of Hollywood. And he has a lot of great interviews with actual executives or actual, you know, people that are in the know. And you really get to know what's going on with the business itself. So I don't know if that's a part of, you know, some people are sometimes wondering, oh, why do they do this? So why do they do that? You know, he gets into that kind of talk, which has opened my eyes to a lot of things of, oh, I can understand why they did this or I can understand, you know, what's going on or why this movie didn't do very well or this movie did very well and what was behind all those things so that's one podcast the other one's called the big picture which i also like they also you know cover you know movies too and for those people who are interested in soundtracks the soundtrack show is a fantastic fantastic podcast um they cover so, uh, he he's a big John Williams fan, so they cover he covers a lot of great John Williams, but he really gets into the nitty gritty of those soundtracks on what does it mean every time he did this theme or this theme. So for it really opened my eyes also to a lot of the John Williams and Steven Spielberg movies, where once you start to watch it again after what he explains, you're like, oh wow, there's so much meaning behind this music, which is the one thing I always say to people is like, you know sound and music and stuff like that is 50 percent of the movie and mm -hmm. sometimes it gets ignored a lot so but yeah you can find me on <laughs> on uh fantasy picks movie edition we just finished doing our uh fan our fantasy pick on um uh, uh what was it uh the last uh, jedi and star yeah star wars episode eight the last jedi uh we kind of went in there and kind of you know Give our opinion and why I think, you know, why we think fans didn't like it. And before that, we actually did a episode, which is actually a little bit long. But if you guys could do it and if you guys are soundtrack fans on our top five composers, movie composers. And so it was the first time I ever used music in the podcast. So I put samples of those uh, of their tracks, which is actually pretty cool. So if you can, please check it out. Cool. Steve? Um, I can be heard sending voicemails to our friends' podcasts out there and uh, right here on Panels to Pixels, of course. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's uh, that's where you can hear me. And, as of course, myself, you can hear me right here on Panels to Pixels podcast as well as Adrenaline Cinema podcast. Um, yeah, I I'd released... I think the last thing I released was The Thing 2011, but coming up, will be Lost Boys. So uh, that's still out there for people to send in whatever. I haven't really finished editing, so if people want to do that, Rima and I could actually talk about your feedback. So if you guys want to throw that in, I could throw that in as a little extra. But beyond that, uh, we'll be working on a, a couple other episodes in the near future, and we'll keep you apprised about that. What was the last episode you released? Uh, the Thing, 2011. On what? Adrenaline Cinemas? Yeah. I thought it was uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I released. <laughs> yeah, that was the last thing you released. And then on Panels to Pixels, the last thing you released on that was uh, Adam and Eve. Yeah, Adam and Eve. Uh, that was with me and Jamie. Uh, also for you listeners to listen to as well, uh, to let you be notified. Yes, Invincible is coming back November 3rd. So Jamie and I will be covering that episodically when it does come back on Amazon Prime. And so. I'll probably pop in with some voicemails on those ones, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if not available, Steve will take control. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, well, talking about voicemails and feedback, uh, you, you could send your feedback to our uh, Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash pounds to pixels, which Actually, I like to leave an image. So if we're covering the episode or whatever we're covering, like Good Omens, I already put it up. All you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels and then just leave your comment in the image below. And that would be fine. You could go to our Twitter at panels to pixels. But 
Now it's considered X. It's not Twitter, so I might be getting rid of it because we don't get really much traffic on there. Mm. But what I did do recently is he is he really changing the Twitter name to X? Yes. How ridiculous. Is he like getting rid of completely the name Twitter or is it like, you know, like, I don't know, like a uh, Facebook that their parent company is meta and meta. I'm not sure entirely, but we don't really get much traffic when it comes to Twitter at all. So mm. my feeling is uh, I'll just leave it on what else we are using, which I actually did for Adam Eve. I put it on Instagram so you can find us at panels to pixels podcast on Instagram. So you could, uh, Reach us out there as well. It can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. Uh, if there's a rating or review, please do so if you can. Apple Podcasts is preferred because it's, uh, I guess, it's the most premiered podcast player of choice and Harold highly. So uh, please do so. Uh, you could always send us just a standard email. You know, we have an email address. And you can just write out a standard texted email to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. Panels two is spelled out to and pixels in the number one at gmail.com. So just write out your thoughts. We could read them. You could be part of the podcast that way, or even better to be on the podcast itself. Record yourself. We have these devices, these handheld things. Mm -hmm. You can record your voice. Steve does it all the time. Don't you do it that way? I do it. Yep. Right there on my phone. Right there on his phone. And he, he live Steve's. And then he sends it out to everybody. And you don't have to worry about anything because it's on the other person's hand who's editing. But <laughs> it's so cool. But we, we would love to hear your voice. And that way you'd be part of the podcast. So, like I said, email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. So, well, with that, that was our episode. I don't want to go any longer than we should because I don't want to bore everybody because we already did take a long time with Secret Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were a little bit passionate about, you know, other things. <laughs> well, no, that I mean, is true. I also about the show because oh, the show too, yeah. we expect so much out of Marvel and while well, they have let us down in the last year or so, we, we, we're we like the, what is it, like the abuse uh, spouse that goes, <laughs> you know what? I know he hit me, but I know he still loves me, so I'm going back to him. You know, and it's like, that's what that, we Stockholm are. Stockholm Syndrome? Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That's oh, what we Rob, are. Rob, we Rob. are abuse. <laughs> we are abuse children and abuse spouses who believe that Marvel We'll get their shit together, and but and oh, we'll be I'm sure they. I, I'm sure we're gonna. Well, we got Spider Man across the universe, so remember that. But that was a Sony product, and we have that to look forward to come out on Blu-ray, and 4K. <laughs> so yep. But uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> that Rob that gets to show. Everything. I am Mark. I'm Robert. And I, I'm still Steve, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And this is Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you in the next panel. Good day, good night, sirs. And ladies <laughs> good and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> see ya. Good night now. <laughs>